so grateful that everyone who matters to me is safe. We're not still talking about Lucas, are we? <laughs> who else would we be talking about? Will, ready to take the plunge then? Rosemary, Nathan just got home. I, I don't even know if he still has feelings for me anymore. I, I was talking about your hair. Right. I, I'm ready. <laughs> Well, this is a very loaded question and I feel like I have to tiptoe because no matter how I answer it, I'm bound to upset someone, which is obviously not my goal. Um, so to speak to how Elizabeth was feeling at the grave, at Jack's grave, when she was mentioning that she had, um, I guess, inadvertently sought out something safe. Yeah, I think you're right. I think she was absolutely frozen and petrified over the idea that she might love again and find herself as broken as she was when Jack passed. Um, and that is not to take anything away from her love story with Lucas, which was very much real. I mean, that was a, when she said yes to that proposal, it was effusive. Um, she had a lot of love um, for Lucas. Um, but there was just this very slow realization because I don't think she was even aware of it when she made the decision to choose Lucas, that she was, you know, call it choosing safe love over great love. But there was this very slow awakening to um, uh, the fact that they weren't meant to be. And I think that was brought on by seeing the very subtle differences between them, Lucas wanting, um, a, a castle on a hill and Elizabeth wanting to stay uh, living next door to her best friends. I mean, little things like that. But when you put them next to, she also happens to be living in the same hometown as this this other guy who um, has the potential to become her great love. It's just um, the the confluence of those things really brought her to self-awareness in a way that made her realize this wasn't this wasn't the right relationship for her or for him for lucas elizabeth's fear that perhaps nathan doesn't have feelings for her anymore she doesn't know um that moment on the steps is is maybe the first moment in season 11 where Elizabeth wonders, oh, did he just look at me? Did Nathan just look at me when he called the the planets beautiful or whatever it was? Like maybe maybe there is hope. I don't know. Am I am I misreading what, what's happening here? Um, and so I think it is a bit of a dance between them this season, trying to evaluate how the other feels because they they have such history that no one wants to make any assumptions. Um, they wouldn't want to do damage to excuse me, a friendship that they worked really hard to build, um, just on the off chance that they're misreading. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Elizabeth was beside herself when she found out that Lucas was in danger and obviously rushed to be by his side. And so she's, she's thrilled that he's alive and well. Um, and, and was really rooting for him. I mean, she wants Lucas not only to live, but to thrive. Um, and and so she's, she's very happy to be able to have a friendship with him. She wants what's best for him. But obviously, you know, not that we are going anywhere near a triangle again, but obviously it does complicate things a little bit to have uh, Lucas around. Um, when she and Nathan are trying to kind of explore what comes next for them. So we'll see how much time they're spending in the same town together and, and what that looks like. It's polarizing, huh? You never know what you're gonna get in terms of reaction. Um, well, 
so there were a lot of conversations. You're right. Um, I think initially the idea was, what can we do for Elizabeth that will help help illustrate where she is in her life? That she's looking for a fresh start, um, wanting to shake things up a bit, breathe new life into this this new chapter. Um, and so there was talk of maybe redecorating her row house, um, but everybody can relate to a post breakup haircut. So it felt like it felt like something that made sense with the story. And also, um, you know, Hope Valley isn't necessarily on the, the cutting edge of of, you know, whatever the contemporary fashion was in the 1920s not to take anything away from Barbara, but she she really, our costume designer, she walks the line between what would be appropriate for that time period and what would be appropriate for this small prairie town. But it felt like here we are heading into the 1920s, all these ladies are wearing chic bobs. And um, so it felt not only true to story, but true to the time. And I'm glad you like it. Oh, well, it's certainly not for lack of desire. We love <laughs> Kayla Wallace, would love for her to be in every episode. Um, Kayla had a really incredible opportunity on another TV series that films out of town. Um, and I will let her speak to that, but it's really exciting. We're excited for her. If you do a quick Google, you'll be able to find it. Um, and and so we, we're hoping that we'll be able to have Fiona back for some episodes, who knows, but um, but yeah, we're truly, truly over the moon thrilled for Kayla. Yeah, well, not to make it about Elizabeth, but look, she goes to the barber shop and Robert's there. She's not gonna have Robert cut her hair. Um, yeah, it's a very close community. I think people are really, are really heartbroken over the fact that Fiona's not around. And you know, we don't, we don't, Truthfully, we don't have enough time in the episode to really dig into that. And so hopefully it doesn't feel like people are in any way cavalier about her departure. But um, for Faith especially, she's really struggling because um, she's kind of got these two best girlfriends. She's got May, who is pretty distracted by Hickam at the moment. And she's got um, Fiona, who's now written to say that she's, she's left Hope Valley indefinitely. Um, and so I think Faith is, is struggling a bit with that loneliness and kind of trying to figure out what her place is. If, if May has this uh, fun new romance and Fiona is really passionate about her work with the suffragettes, what is it that's going to um, really bring fulfillment to Faith's life outside of, obviously, medicine, which is very important. There, you know, there's a bit of um sort of single parent to single guardian um commiserating <laughs> or or connecting um but but not too much it's not it's not as though elizabeth is stepping in to show faith the ropes um for faith it's more about her figuring it out on her own with the help of some friends and uh hopefully childcare. <laughs> I, well, I love Pascal. I make no secret of that. Um, and she has just really earned the loyalty and passion of our fan base. If you think about it, when she came in at the end of season one, she was like maybe more hated than Gowan at the time. People were like, don't get in between our Jack and Elizabeth. Um, and she has, just created this incredible character over the course of 11 seasons that people adore and understandably so. She's she's a, a firecracker, that one. Um, I wish that she and I had more scenes together in season 11, but truthfully, Pascal or Rosemary has this incredible arc as almost like, you know, buddy cops with Bill Avery. They're doing a lot of investigating together. So, um, there's a lot of oil and water and comedy between them. Uh, as far as Elizabeth and Rosemary go, they're always there for each other's friends. Rosemary, obviously, great advice, um, shoulder to lean on. And there's some really nice moments between them 
and their children. Um, so yeah, there, there's some really sweet, tender friendship moments between Elizabeth and Rosemary. The, the main thing is just this like d discovery of what might still be there with Nathan and did she ruin her chance? What, what could it possibly look like? Um, but there are certainly other stories that come up. Um, she's in active teacher mode. There's a great arc with um, Toby who's struggling with his um, fractions and they find a way to break through there. There's also a really, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a really intense episode that involves a returning guest star um, that's going to be incredibly emotionally challenging for Elizabeth. I think that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> um, there's more singing, there's some family, there's, there's a lot. I mean, season 11, it really runs the gamut for Elizabeth in a very exciting way.